Talking to ResApp today, ASX code RAP, it's got a market cap of around 58 million. We have with us the CEO and Managing Director, Dr. Tony Keating. Now, um, ResApp are working on apps to provide instant clinical quality diagnostic tests and management tools directly to consumers and healthcare professionals. Now, Tony, obviously everyone's been talking about COVID. So we're going to ask how, how is COVID currently diagnosed and there's a lot of talk in the media about rapid antigen tests and how do they fit into the picture of what you're doing? Yeah, well, thanks, Tim. Well, I, as many of your viewers will know, especially being here in Australia, you know, we've been very used to PCR testing here. Um, so a PCR testing is taking a sample from the nasal passages or in some cases a saliva sample, shipping that off to a lab, which then tries to grow the virus over time and then looks for a I guess, a signal in that to say, yes, the patient has COVID or not. Uh, as I said, it's shipped to a lab, so it often takes 24 plus hours. It's quite expensive. Uh, and so what we've seen now is the world has moved, is moving towards rapid antigen tests. Uh, so these are a rapid test, still a nasal swab, uh, but you react that nasal swab with a chemical and get a, a result within roughly 15, 30 minutes. So much faster result. But, you know, alongside that comes less accuracy. So, you know, a, a rapid antigen test typically is around 70% accurate. Uh, so there's a trade-off there between speed and, and accuracy. And then, you know, the, the most basic test that we're all used to, that we've all seen over many years is, is a temperature check. Uh, so, you know, temperature check as we walk into a building, as we board an airplane, as we enter a country, uh, it's seen as, as a way of identifying whether someone has a viral infection, because when you get a viral infection, your body generates heat to try to kill that virus. Um, and so therefore, temperature check identifies that. Unfortunately, you know, temperature checks are only around 20% accurate. Um, so they miss a lot of cases. So yeah, there's a, there's a spectrum of tests and clinicians, governments, employers are all using different tests for different applications. And Tony, why is um, ResApp um, developing another way of screening and, and what needs to be done to bring a, a test like yours to, to market? We've looked at, uh, I guess, a number of commercial opportunities for COVID-19 testing. Uh, so as I said before, there are a number of different ways currently being used, temperature, rapid antigen um, and PCR. Uh, but one, one thing that we, can, we see is this need for you know, fast, instant diagnosis or instant screening rather than rapid screening. So even if it's taking 15, 30 minutes, uh, that's not for a rapid antigen test. That's not really what you want as someone's entering a building or entering a, a sports venue or boarding an aircraft. Um, so definitely there's an opportunity for an instant diagnosis or an instant screen uh, and then low cost. So you know, ResApp has built a business around using cough sounds recorded on a smartphone, uh, which means we can get mass scale uh, at very, very low cost. Uh, and so, you know, rapid antigen testing in the US is $25 a test. You know, we could significantly reduce that cost by doing it on a phone. So that's the opportunity that we see, you know, instant test, uh, possibly probably in a venue or a transportation or a, a, a company office. Um, what we see the route to market there is, is running clinical trials. Um, so, you know, we need to validate that we can deliver an algorithm that's able to identify COVID. Uh, and then what we need to do from there is run through the regulatory processes. So, you know, get approval from someone like the US FDA or the TGA here in Australia. It's interesting in the US, the FDA have approved a number of screening tests under an emergency use authorization which is essentially a fast track authorization in the US. Uh, so that could be an option for us. And, and Tony, with, with so many people being fully vaccinated um, these days, is the market still large for COVID testing? The vaccination doesn't prevent infection uh, by COVID-19. Uh, and we've seen that in the US, we're seeing it play out in Singapore uh, right now where we have high rates, very high rates of vaccination, but still significant number of people being diagnosed with COVID-19. So COVID-19 is still spreading uh, through a vaccinated population. Uh, that obviously getting COVID-19 isn't as serious. You don't tend to be hospitalized um, with if you've been vaccinated, which is great, uh, but it's still a disease that needs managing. So both being able to screen people and to, to reduce the spread uh, is important, but also one of the areas that we're working on is following those patients over time and looking at can we help managing that, manage those patients? And that's where we're heading to as a, as a, as a, as a world. 
I guess, as the world, we're heading towards a place where, yes, you have COVID-19, we now need to manage that, manage whether or not you can be out in the community and spreading COVID-19. You know, much like if you've got the flu, you know, we, we recommend you stay at home so you don't spread the flu uh, to more vulnerable people. Uh, and then managing those patients over time, knowing whether or not they're going to end up in hospitalization, developing pneumonia, et cetera. So it's a very important fact to be able to identify them, but we're also looking at, you know, how do we help manage and identify whether those patients are more severe than others. And, and Tony, what, what is ResApp's solution in regards to um, testing for COVID using a, a smart app? ResApp's been around now for six years. We've run a number of clinical studies that use cough sounds to diagnose different respiratory diseases. So COVID is a respiratory or it's a respiratory virus uh, and it causes pneumonia in the lungs. Uh, and there have been a number of research groups globally that have looked at cough sounds and whether cough sound signatures contain enough information to diagnose COVID. And there are strong signals there. I don't, we, I don't think anyone's proven it for sure right now. And there are some limitations to those studies, but it looks like that there is a signal in cough that allows us to identify COVID. So why are we, why are we going after this? Well, we have probably the only team in the world that's taken a cough-based diagnostic algorithm from a university research lab all the way through to clinical trials, to regulatory approval, and now commercialization. So we have the team to make this happen. Uh, and I think that's, that's a really important fact. Right now, we're running clinical trials that overcome a lot of those limitations that were previously, um, that, that previous groups were doing. So we're really excited about our clinical trials. And then I think, you know, for us, the, the big opportunity here is just being able to deploy this technology like we do with ResApp DX and our other technology on anybody's smartphone that they have in their pocket. Um, that, that's a game changer for COVID-19 screening and then, you know, moving into diagnosis and um, management as well. Tony, with this ResApp and the smartphone app, um, who ends up paying and what's the business model behind um, the, the application. We're talking to a number of different organizations. Uh, a, a really forward example, for example, is employers uh, and workplace screening. Uh, so you can imagine employers needing to screen their workforce as they arrive at work in the morning, as visitors arrive uh, and being able to identify those patients with COVID. So that, that's one example. Uh, you also have transportation companies, airlines, uh, you have governments who may be interested in mass screening uh, programs where rather than everybody getting in their car and driving to a, a PCR test like we do here in Australia, you know, the ability to deliver the app through a smartphone download uh, could allow us to do surveillance, disease surveillance uh, cheaper and more effectively. Now, Tony, if you're successful with this uh, COVID testing application by using your smartphone, is there any other applications uh, you have in the market at present? Yes, yeah, so we have multiple smartphone apps in the market that are doing different diagnoses. Uh, one of the key core competencies for ResApp is a product called ResApp DX, uh, where we are diagnosing common respiratory disease, acute respiratory diseases like pneumonia or asthma. Uh, one of the interesting things that COVID has brought to light is the use of telehealth um, globally. Uh, and ResApp DX has a very natural fit in the telehealth market providing telehealth clinicians the ability to remotely assess respiratory symptoms. And you know, today that's being used in a number of countries. It's being used by Medgate in Switzerland. It's being used here in Australia. What we see as an opportunity is actually leveraging the COVID technology into that product. Uh, so you can imagine being able to remotely assess patients you know, who present with general respiratory symptoms, not, know, not knowing if they have COVID um, underlying that symptom underlying those symptoms. Uh, and that's a really important fact for those clinicians who are trying to make decisions about what to do with those patients. We currently do that today with COPD. We do some screening for undiagnosed chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, which helps clinicians make better decisions around you know, what's, what to do next. You can imagine how a viral infection like COVID or flu or SARS or bird flu, all of those types of um, viral viruses if we were able to add that to ResApp DX, it just provides more tools and more information for the clinician to make, you know, get their patient better faster. And, and finally, where, where's ResApp at the moment in regards to uh, clinical trials? Tim, we have three clinical trials underway at the moment, two in the US and one in India. Uh, the US recruitment has been a little slower than we'd liked uh, due to the low prevalence of COVID when that study started. That prevalence has increased over the last few months. And so we're now seeing good recruitment in the US study. Our India study is recruiting really, really well. Uh, we're excited about that. And that's on target to complete by the end of October. 
it's important to realize that our studies are open, uh, which means that data from those studies immediately flow back to our team who are looking at the algorithms. And so they're now crunching the numbers, looking at those algorithms, and you know we're excited about what's next. Tony Keating, thanks for your time. Great, thanks, Tim.